Hi, my name is Brian. I should have ducked. <laughs> and I'm going to show you how the clutch works. I'm going to do an illustration first. I'm going to explain what everything is, give, put some names to some of this stuff. And then I'm going to take you to a car that I'm currently changing the clutch on. And we're going to show you while the engine and transmission are separated. Because that's where the clutch lives. It lives in between the engine and transmission. And there's a darn good reason for that. Um, the reason is, is we're trying to get all the power from the crankshaft in the motor or engine, uh, which is turning this way to send power to the transmission, but not all the time. We're fickle about this. We just want it to happen sometimes. So here's the story. Um, the crankshaft rotates, so you got pistons and all that uh, kind of stuff turning. you got a cylinder head and all that going on, and that's all fine and great. Um, and on one end of the crankshaft you have a drive pulley, on the other end you have just a plate. I'll show you what that looks like here shortly. Um, bolted to that plate, there's bolts bolting a flywheel to the end of this. Now we've got a flywheel which is a big heavy metal disc. Here is the bolts that hold this onto the crankshaft. So this is the flywheel. You'll notice that there's teeth all the way around it. I don't know how well you can see these, but that's what the starter engage. That's what the clutch bolts to. That's why that comes into our story. So the flywheel is a big heavy thing that uh, maintains a, you know, angular momentum and inertia of the engine so that it keeps going. Because the engine fires on different cylinders, bam, 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 whatever, keeps it going. So between firing, something has to keep that moving so it doesn't stall. And so that's what the flywheel does. <coughs> Pull that last little bolt out and then just kind of wiggle it off. Sometimes they just drop, sometimes they got a shelf to sit on. So it's best to just play it safe. So here's a flywheel. It is a big, thick, heavy piece of metal. The harmonic balancer, which we'll also call the drive pulley, which we'll also call the crank pulley. It's got all these names, it must be an important part. Kind of does the same thing. You got a lot of heavy weight on this side, so you balance it so that it's even. So where the clutch lives is it's inside the bell housing. You're learning so much awesome vocabulary. You're going to sound so smart when you talk to your friends. My clutch is acting up. Well, have you seen a lot of black powdery crap coming from the bell housing? And they'll be like, whoa, you're a man's man. You know what you're talking about. And uh, you're welcome. This is the free service I provide. So basically what we've got here is we have an input shaft for the transmission and we have a crankshaft on the engine. So on the engine side we've got all this power, it's rotating, all of my little arrows started to look like G's and then I tried to make them look like they say C-R-A-N-K, like crankshaft, but it just looks like scribbles by now, but you'll just uh, forgive me. <laughs> So basically you've got the input shaft, and the input shaft to a manual transmission is illustrated, uh, which you would have if you have a clutch. It only goes into the transmission about halfway. After that you've got these other shafts mounted in there, and then these each represent gears. So these gears, you can't shift them, they slide on the shaft that they're on. So this one would slide to here, this one would slide to here, and so basically the power goes back and forth between these different things. And you see this is a little gear and a big gear, just like on your bicycle. You've got different gear ratios that wind up going out the back of the transmission and turn the drive shaft. Or in this case, they go out to the CV axles and turn the front wheels. So to the clutch, so we got all this background. We know where our flywheel is. We got a little starter motor here just for cuteness. And uh, we'll draw in a clutch. So you'll see that these two shafts are not connected in any way, shape, or form. That's the job of the clutch. So you've got a pressure plate that bolts onto the flywheel. And the pressure plate has, think of it like an Oreo cookie. One black uh, cookie bit of goodness here is your flywheel and the other one is the pressure plate and the pressure plate has all kinds of components and then that white portion in the middle so here's black cookie remember we got a shaft going through the middle of that pressure plate and almost to the crankshaft so we got the input shaft and this and we're going to tie those together with the clutch now that white cookie good uh, creamy goodness in the middle of our Oreo cookie is the clutch disc. When somebody rides the clutch or doesn't know how to drive a stick shift and it starts to smell like brakes, like basically that's what this uh, part in here, in our picture it's white, in reality it looks like uh, brake pad material on both sides of a metal disc. 
So that's what we have. So that has splines on it, and those splines correspond with the input shaft. So we've got the input shaft, and it's stabbed through the middle of the clutch disc. And that clutch disc, I'm writing it down because it's easier to just read it. I mean, if you're from another country, like I know that I read Spanish a lot better than I hear it. And when I see it written out, I do a better job with it. So I'm just going to write it out. So you got our clutch disc, our flywheel, and our uh, pressure plate. So our pressure plate, all of this stuff is just stuck onto the back of that flywheel. It's all bolted on there. When you put a transmission in, the transmission just goes right into there. It bolts on all the way around the edges of the bell housing and the input shaft that is in red just plugs right into that clutch disc. So it's important that that's centered because if it's not centered your bolts aren't going to line up or it's going to hit something on that and not go in. So there's a special tool, it's called a pilot tool, I'll show you what that looks like. And remember, you can skip ahead, if you already know all this stuff, just skip ahead. You know, you can do that on the bottom of the scroll thing. Um, but anyway, here's the vocabulary about what we're going to do. So right now I have a transmission already off, so you're going to see um, the pressure plate. I'll write that down here. The pressure plate is on the back, holding everything onto the flywheel. So, and basically what happens is this is all spring loaded and it puts a lot of force. You know, it's bolted to the flywheel. The flywheel's bolted to the crankshaft, so it just smashes that disc in place. Now, this is all spring loaded to hold against there, but there's a bunch of levers all the way around. Just like, you know, like you ever see a sunshine, you got all of this little rays of golden goodness going out. It's a happy little sunshine. So basically, it's the same thing, but instead of out going this way, they all go to the middle. So you got levers all the way around. And when you push on those levers, it releases the spring force back this way. Now, I don't expect you to learn anything from this other than vocabulary and some basic principles of what's going on. Let's go to the car and I'll show you exactly what it is on the vehicle. All right, so this is the old pressure plate. And when we do a clutch, we do a kit, and the kit comes with the disc, because that wears out. You know what's basically inside of here. You can hear it's kind of rattling when I put my finger where the input shaft goes. This is just kind of a dummy input shaft to help line that up. It's there for illustration purposes to kind of show you what's going on here. What I'm going to do, um, this is the oil pan of the engine, and I've got a ratchet set up here. So when I turn the bolt that holds the harmonic balancer on, or that belt drive pulley we've talked about, you can see that all turns together. The crankshaft moves all together with the clutch. The clutch is just bolted on with these bolts that hold the pressure plate onto the uh, flywheel. You can see the flywheel teeth around the edge. You'll see it better here in just a minute. So this is all bolted to the crankshaft essentially, and then the input shaft goes into here, and you can't turn this by hand, or it'll turn the whole crankshaft, but if you push down on all these levers, you can spin this freely. I'm going to simulate that by loosening these bolts. So right now I can't turn this at all, but if the bolts are loose, that's going to kind of be like if the clutch was pushed down and that thing were pulled back. I'm going to pull the whole assembly back, and you'll get the same effect. And you'll see a bunch of black dust falling down. That's the friction material from the clutch disc. And when you wear out a clutch, or if you take a lot of that material off by driving poorly and it stinks, that stink is that dust. You can actually smell it. See, I've got one, two, loose, one, two, loose, one. So I know there's one back here. I can't see it from where I'm at, but we know that there's a bolt there somewhere. Oh, that's loose too. So what's happening is, is this, this is actually stuck on with these little pins. you got these guide pins that help hold it on. So I'll grab a screwdriver, pry it back a little bit, and you'll see this tool kind of drop down because it'll be free. It won't be held the way that it was. There it went. You see that kind of drop down. Like I say, this one has 188,000 miles on this clutch, so there's going to be a lot of that material and we'll see it kind of thin. It'll probably be down to the rivets. So now the disc, I can move it freely. 
So if you were to push down on these levers and pull that pressure plate back away from the disc, you'd have that same type of situation that we have here where I can just spin it by hand. So that's basically how a clutch works. Let's look into this thing a little bit. What I do is I hang this thing like a pitcher. I'll take these bolts and set them aside. I'm going to pull this one last because it's kind of at the top. Da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da. There we go. So that should be just about off. Look at all that. There's a fair amount of rust too. So be sure to wear some type of uh, breathing protection or something, I'm sure. So how many bolts I got? One, three, five. So I've just got the pitcher hanger at the top here. So I'm going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this because now the only thing that's holding it on is those alignment pins the ones that I mentioned earlier these guys that it was stuck on when you put the tool in as you take the old clutch off it kind of holds the disc so you have less of a juggling act to perform because these things are not light you know it's, uh, it's handling all the force of the motor there's quite a bit of metal to be able to make that happen well this thing's been on there since 2000. It's been on there for you know, 13, 14 years, depending on the boat ride this took. It doesn't want to come off. Fair amount of rust. Needless to say, I am not directly below. <laughs> I'll pull out my pilot tool and I'll hang on to that for when we do assembly. Here is the bolts that hold this onto the crankshaft. So this is the flywheel. You'll notice that there's teeth all the way around it. I don't know how well you can see these, but that's what the starter engage. <coughs> so like I was saying, here's the starter. You can see the Bendix gear. They're tight with that radiator hose, but so this gear here on the starter engages the gear teeth that you see here at the bottom on the flywheel to turn the crank to get the engine going. So it's turning the pistons, all that stuff all together, opening, closing valves, you name it. It's just getting everything moving on the engine. So we'll set that aside. What we're going to do next is, you can see these are 12 point socket type bolts. So we get our metric set. It's usually 14 is what they like to use. So mine's got fancy lines on it for torquing down head, get head bolts that are the same kind of layout. So we'll set that to loosen. Go ahead and pull this off and show you what the end of the crankshaft looks like. It's actually, behind this is where the rear main seal is basically the seal on the back of the motor. Anything protruding through the motor to, to relay uh, spinning force or whatever, you have to have a seal because the engine's full of oil, not all the way full, but it's circulating inside the engine. And there's pressure, there's positive pressure in there. So if you don't have a seal, you know, it'd push the oil out. So we'll look at the rear main seal and uh, the back of the crankshaft. Oftentimes these have a weird bolt pattern where they're not exactly the same all the way around. So it's a good idea to score it so when you go to put it back on, it's easier to see how to put it on because it'll only have one correct position. I'm not sure if this one's the way, it, you know, that same way, but we'll score it just for kicks and giggles. dust if you just pulse it. Let's have red Loctite on them. They don't want to come out. Same thing, just leave one bolt in there, kind of hang it like a pitcher. It's got a little bit of a lip or a rim that it's sitting on. Not all of them have that. So if I hold it at the bottom, what's going to happen is it's going to be top heavy and it's going to roll this way and make my face look even better. Or it's going to roll the other way and risk, you know, hitting something else or chipping the floor. So I'll grab it from the top. Pull that last little bolt out and then just kind of wiggle it off. Sometimes they just drop, sometimes they got a shelf to sit on. So it's best to just play it safe. A good idea to pull this and take a look at how your rear main seal is. Because you have to do all of this to get to the rear main seal if you want to fix that. Say your car's leaking oil. This one's got all kinds of oil leaks. 
and you can see by the fresh oil right here that it's definitely leaking from the rear main seal. So we'll wipe this down, we'll get a new rear main seal coming. So this is crankshaft right here that you see and it's actually not this thick all the way through the motor it's more like this thick like this guy right here this is just flanged out so that you can uh, bolt something to it something like a flywheel or a flex plate on an automatic transmission you'll have basically the same thing with that ring gear and whatever but it'll just be a dummy plate of steel and it'll kind of use a torque converter and the torque converter will they'll have like uh, five or six bolts that bolt to the torque converter some only have four some only three but you'll have bolts that you can get to either through here or through the starter hole and it'll uh, use that big metal uh, it's like basically two fans and one fan is blowing on the other fan but instead of air passing like a pinwheel and a fan it'll just basically be pushing fluid so you get really good hookup and some of them even have pins that lock the torque converter so on automatic transmission the engine will all be the same you know to this point but instead of a flywheel you'll have a flex plate and then a big heavy torque converter you know this big donut looking you know fan pinwheel type deal so anyway uh, I think this is about all I'm gonna do on this clutch video you kinda get the idea I might show a little bit of the assembly as I put the other one together but in the meantime I need to get on the phone and get one of these seals coming so here's the transmission this is the bell housing this is that input shaft the red one that I showed you and what I didn't show you is the way that we push on those levers is with a clutch fork. Um, most cars will have a clutch fork. If it's a French design then the the little bearing will be uh, right in here and you'll have a hydraulic line and you won't be able to service any of that from the outside but this is a Toyota. This one actually makes sense. This is a good quality design so we have a clutch fork. So it's like a, it's like a teeter-totter. This is the middle of the teeter-totter. Uh, this is one kid and then this is the other kid so when one kid pushes down this kid goes up when this kid goes up or pushes forward it engages those golden rays of sunshine that I showed you on the board um, which is the fingers or the levers on the pressure plate the so pressure plate is uh, got three springs you see that spring steel it's a little bit different color so there's a spring there a spring there and a spring there's lots of different designs of these there have been a number of designs where there's actually a little coil spring on each uh, individual one. So the way these levers work is the levers push or go down inside of here and actually pull up on this. This is the one end of the Oreo cookie. This is the cream in the middle. This is the disc and you can see it looks kind of like a brake pad or a brake shoe and it's got that on both sides. And you see there's a certain amount of thickness. When you read on here it says flywheel side so there's one black cookie here's the white cream in the middle and then the other black cookies a flywheel that this bolts onto with these holes alright so I have the new clutch in place um, I don't know if you can see this but I've got the bolts all just finger tight so I tighten that up till it's just finger tight and what that does is it, it causes it to hold that disc in place right now is a kind of an important thing the stage of the game part of the job whatever you want to call it here's the uh, fake input shaft it's called a pilot tool and it's holding that disc you know just kinda in the middle so I need to get that dead center so I get it to where it'll kinda hold in place by having these hand tight once I do that I get my head up in here I get it so that it's just exactly where I want it to be and you can see there's still a gap here there's still a little separation so I get that exactly centered if it's not exactly centered, I'm going to be holding the transmission trying to get it to go on there and it's not going to go. And that's, that's fodder for cuss words basically. I'm trying to clean up my language. So we're going to make sure it's right in the middle. There we go. Now watch that gap as I tighten these down. So I'll tighten this one a little. You see that gap go away. Tighten the other side. Go back to it what's happening is all those uh, levers on the end here those are all flattening down because the thing the pressure plates actually moving this way it's actually moving out away from the clutch <clears throat> in this case it's holding it down but after you push on these it would actually lift off away from the disc same direction just a degree of it alright so watch these fingers as I tighten this down Watch how they just kind of flatten. You'll kind of see those go down. 
You see them move just a little bit. Watch these ones. It's already pretty flat. But basically just go around and tighten all of these down. Um, looking in through there you can see I've got that just right in the middle, right dead center. They're about level. So anyway, that's how the clutch works. And that's the names of all the parts and uh, you're all kinds of smart now. Life hurts a lot less when you're smarter. So the way that these all get together is this is splined to fit the input shaft. You see that? So you got all of those splines so whenever I spin the disc it spins the input shaft. So what spins the disc you ask? What makes this go around? Well that black cookie on this side it's actually smashed in between these things so tight and so hard that it can't slip. When it wears out if it gets too thin because it's gone too many miles each of these uh, friction surfaces wear out just like brake pads wear out and after that happens and uh, basically what will happen is you stomp on the gas and this will spin but this will drag because it's got the axles and the wheels and tires and everything else behind it to kind of slow it down and that's what's happening here uh, the person that owns this car should basically get a trophy that's a little Toyota has a hundred and eighty eight thousand miles something like that Let's take a look here. It's on its. Oh, you can't see. Oh, that's a bummer. I had to take the battery out for this job, or you'd see 188,000 miles on the original clutch. That's actually pretty dang good. That's a uh, that's, uh, good clutch driving. So, here's, uh, here's some more detail on this. So, this goes in between on uh, basically where my thumb is would be the flywheel. And when you look down on this and just kind of line it up like a rifle sight, you can see it sticks out just a little bit farther. So that's how much room that spring is pushing and crushing this in. It doesn't seem like a lot, but it's a lot. So if you wear down the surface of those uh, friction material uh, plates or discs, it's going to slip. So this goes on here. This goes on, you know, first essentially it's going to go on like that. And can you see what's going on there? You see the part that it's touching inside of there? that is a bearing because if you were to engage solid metal to this remember this is spinning at however fast your engine's spinning so say your engine's spinning 3000 rpms or 1000 rpms whatever or idling at 800 this is spinning on the crankshaft so this has to be able to uh, have some give when you look close you can see that there's a bearing you can see that that's moving like that so when this engages and pushes on those levers, it pushes on all the levers at the same time. So if I stand on this, it's a little bit bouncy, it's a little bit springy, it's actually really stiff, but you can feel it give a little bit. When you push on the clutch, there's a slave cylinder that pushes on the fork, pushes on this, and then this prize, this plate, and then sitting on the ground, it pries it down, it pries it away that way. You can see the levers when you look through like right in through here you can see that kind of cast iron there's a little lip to it and then the levers uh, pry up underneath of this that's bolted to the flywheel and it just basically pries that thing up it pries it away from the disc so say it's sitting like this it pries away from the disc so that there's a gap alright so there's this side of the clutch so we talked about the input shaft we talked about the throw out bearing uh, I didn't write that down, but this is a throw out bearing. It throws out the clutch, you know, basically, you know, makes this pull back away from the disc. And so it basically makes it so that you're freewheeling, so that the input shaft can stop. Because, like I say, this doesn't bolt or, you know, go right into the crankshaft of the car. It uses the clutch to be able to be connected so that it rotates all the same. I almost forgot I really wanted to include this in there. What does a bad clutch disc look like and what does a good one look like? Um, well here's the old pressure plate. You can see it's got some heat scoring and stuff but it's not too bad. We replace it anyway because that thing's been through 14 years of heat cycles of heating up, cooling down, heating up, cooling down. So these springs aren't what they used to be so they slip a little. But the main failure that we had here is the disc. Remember I said there's a certain thickness to it? Um, we got all zeroed out here on the micrometer. Well, if I come around to this side this will work better you can read it. So if I mic this it's 5.6 millimeters and so if 
I squish it down, five six. Okay, so I'm gonna take the new one, measure it at the high point, and we're about eight millimeters, right at eight. So 5.6, 8, we've lost 2.4 millimeters. That doesn't seem like a lot, but that's enough to make it slip. So when we look across this one, just line it up like we did before, there's nothing there. So that's why it slips. It still hooks up okay, but when you're in higher gears, you're in third, fourth gear, and you give it gas, it slips. You rev it, and it just gives way. When we look at this one, we've got just those 2 millimeters, but that's all the difference between go and don't go. You see there? You can see it's got all these little ridges in it to help get rid of the dust. And you can see the rivets here. When we look at this one, I thought we'd be down to the rivets. And we're really, really close. You can see that rivet there. We're almost down to that rivet, but not quite. On this side, they're shining. We are down to the rivets. And this is the side that was on the pressure plate. You can see there's kind of grooves worn into this too. So, we'll be able to reuse the flywheel no problem. Um, now there's a little difference between the factory one, it's got rubber bushings um, to help dampen the, the force or whatever. Because when you twist or you dump the clutch, you can see that little bit of rattle to it. You know, the rubber's old and worn and, you know, it's just a little bit clunky. If you look at the new one, we got those nice new springs. We got that same dampening force so that it doesn't rip the clutch apart, it just gives a little bit. You got a little rotational give. So these rivets here, they've got a little bit of slot cut into it. You can't see it because it's all sandwiched in there, but that's the way it is. So anyway, you can see there's a long way to go before these rivets are going to get into. So about a millimeter and a half on each side, and that's about what we lost, about a millimeter point two. So I showed you the front wheel drive version. Let's show you one that looks a little bit more like this with a little bit different style clutch fork, shall we? We go down on this, uh, it's on a Dodge Dakota, it's a 98. All the same kind of thing, but the clutch fork's a little different on this one. It goes all the way across and then it pivots clear over here. And then it's supposed to slide back and forth on this. And of course that doesn't work very well. <laughs> so the throw out bearing on this one basically threw out its bearings. Which is kind of funny if you think about it. I'm going to pull that off and... You see all the scoring that's there. And then there's the clutch on this one. Same kind of deal, just a little bit different setup on the transmission configuration. This one's that kind of long style. And you see that the shaft for the input shafts here, and then it doesn't uh, it doesn't go all the way. It stops about here, and then there's another shaft down here that picks up down there, and then relays back up to there. And then when you shift. All this does is it just relays the gears back and forth. I'll put a link in the description, right? Or not in the description, I'll just hyperlink it here to open up in a new window for kind of a, a demonstration on a Pujo Wrangler one that I did that showed the guts of. So I hope you liked my video. I hope you found this helpful. And as always, uh, be sure to click thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, put them in the comments below or visit ericthecarguy.com. Um, he's got a search forum and all kinds of helpful stuff and uh, other than that if you haven't clicked subscribe already I'd appreciate it if you did and you can watch uh, future videos I have posted. Thanks for being a part of this. Cheers.